Welcome and good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for the webinar today. The webinar is entitled, How to Boost Mill Profits by Reducing Gear Coupling Maintenance and Lubrication Costs. Thank you for joining us and spending your afternoon with John Crane. My name is Jolyn Kennedy, and I'm the Global Marketing Communications Manager, and I'll be your host today. Real quick before we start, I'm going to tell you a little bit of, about John Crane. John Crane is more than just one of the world's leading providers of engineered technology. With more than 6,000 employees around the globe, we supply and service the products used by our customers and process industries for the mission their mission critical operations, many of which involve extremely challenging processing conditions. Our, our outstanding reputation for designing and engineering high-quality, durable, customized solutions is globally rec recognized. In fact, John Crane has received the 200, 2019 Global Mechanical Seal Market Leadership Award by third-party market research firm Frost & Sullivan, so we're very proud of that. Um, we've been in business for over 100 years, and we provide rotating equipment engineering solutions for um, oil and gas, pulp and paper, mining, chemical, PowerGen, and many other industries. Um, real quick, I'm going to go over some webinar housekeeping information. We will set aside 10 minutes at the end of the webinar to field your questions, so please do feel free to submit your questions in the ch on the panel. And we will get to those if we have enough time at the end of the, the webinar. Um, there will be slides available, and you will receive a follow-up with the webinar recording, and also you'll be able to, to download the webinar recording from our website. It's our webinar library, so there will be a lot of different ways that you can access this content. This webinar today was designed to help you achieve and overcome challenges in your pulp and paper mill and help you stay up and running. So this, we feel this topic is very important to you and it's going to help you increase coupling life and eliminate coupling maintenance and downtime on your mission critical paper machines in the pulp and paper mill. Um, so we think everybody is looking for that. They want to learn how to increase production and quality in less time under increasingly severe conditions. And some of you are facing um, less resources and less skilled workforce available. So um, this webinar topic will really help you consider advanced disk and elastomer couplings to help you decrease critical, critical equipment downtime, reduce maintenance expenses, reduce outside diameter and weight for your high torque applications due to the optimized design of these couplings and to achieve longer service life cycle. And at the bottom line is you'll be improving your mill's profitability. Disc couplings put your machines under control. Eliminating coupling backlash, these disc pack couplings make paper machines more reliable and trouble free, keeping you up and running. So that's what John Crane is here for. We're here to help you stay up and running. Um, I'm very excited to introduce our engineering expert speakers today. Um, today we have with us Michael LeBlanc. Michael has over 30 years of experience with couplings and mechanical fields, and he's an expert in the pulp and paper industry. Um, he started his career at working at companies such as the Gates Corporation and Motion Industries, a leader Motion Industries, and he's been with John Crane for many, many years. He served as field engineer, regional sales manager, and pulp and paper expert. Um, Michael has spent a total of 43 years working in power transmission in engineering and sales, and he has an, his bachelor's of it, from Louisiana State University in business management and also um, in industrial distribution. So Mike is an excellent engineering expert for you. We also are excited to have Tony Platt speaking today. Tony is the global product manager for our standard couplings at John Crane. He also has over, well over 30 years of experience in couplings and mechanical fields. Um, he started with John Crane as a technical apprentice in our Manchester, England facility of John Crane, and he's worked in various roles, including the drawing office, application engineer, power transmission manager, quality health environmental safety manager, and now he is the global product manager 
for our um, standard coupling offering. So we're, we're very excited to have Tony with us. He's got a bachelor's in engineering. The objectives of the webinar are that we hope that you take away some tips and tricks so you're able to um, help in the mill to achieve mill pro productivity goals with conversion to disc couplings that last up to three to four times longer than, than gear couplings. Um, you'll be able to maximize critical pulp machine life through lower imposed loads due to lighter weight. You'll be able to improve torque capability and transmission reliability on paper machines. You'll also benefit from lowering maintenance costs and downtime. Your paper machines and, and mission critical equipment will increase. The re reliability and MTBR will increase. You'll eliminate frequent lubrication expenses and annual maintenance costs. And you'll be able to uh, avoid unplanned and planned downtime that, that can end up reducing mill profits and your productivity output. Um, so this, set, this webinar today is designed to really help you increase your pulp production capacity to much higher levels and optimize your assets. And with that, that's, um, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Tony. Go ahead, Tony. Hello, everyone. Um, just want to start off with a quick overview of the coupling market. Uh, the split up into general industries, which is your small off-site pumps, your low-duty mechanical drives, uh, cooling towers, critical industries, which are in particular a lot of the pulp and paper machines that we'll be talking about today. You've also got your API 610 pumps, uh, which is your process pumps and your low-speed compressors, and then your API 671 turbo machinery, which is your compressors and high-speed turbines. So as you can see from the slide, John Crane Metastream offers a wide range of couplings to cover all your coupling market needs. So what, what makes John Crane different? Well, all our couplings are supplied with a minimum of one level of anti-fly safety. They exceed industry standards uh, for couplings and pumps. Um, unrivaled reliability. All the couplings have long um, mean time between failures. We have global support and service centers all around the globe, uh, seven manufacturing plants, and over 50 major sales offices. Uh, we have over 60 years of manufacturing membrane disc and diaphragm couplings. We have over a million couplings operating worldwide and over 30,000 high performance. Um, couplings on turbo machineries, and we have engineers around the globe located in various places to support you no matter what part of the globe you're in and, and when you need support. One of, the, one of the keys with any coupling supply is that the, the customer in question writes a specification that's clear and concise and gets you the coupling that you're looking for. So it's very important that uh, when you start looking for couplings that you write a specification that's very clear and concise. If you need assistance writing a coupling specification, John Crane staff are more than willing to help you with that need. So in particular, one of the things we're going to be talking about a lot today is gear couplings and disc couplings and what the differences are. So some of the features of a gear coupling, uh, they require lubrication. They also require periodic inspection on a regular basis. Um, so it, and to be able to inspect the gear coupling, you've got to be able to take the gear coupling apart so you can actually get to the teeth and clean the teeth so you can actually see the teeth. Um, so it takes time and you've got to shut down your pulp and paper machines to be able to do it. Um, you've got, um, you, you, you need lubrication, of course. Um, most of the gear couplings come with no protective coating, so they're open to the environment of the pulp and paper industry. Uh, there's limited availability on the spacer um, types that are readily available on the shelf. They perform poorly in high temperature applications due to the limitations of the lubrication. They're vulnerable to axle misalignment failures, which is where the teeth aren't completely aligned and then you get um, overloading on the teeth, which would cause the teeth to fail quicker than they, they would do in normal running. Um, upon failure, the whole coupling needs to be replaced because you shear the teeth away, and so it's no, there's no save in it. You, you've got to replace the whole coupling, which means you've got to shut down your pulp and paper machines. 
typical mean time, mean life of a gear coupling is five years. So what we've got here is a picture of a gear coupling. Um, because a gear coupling is a metal to metal contact coupling, the teeth in the coupling, which is how the coupling accepts misalignment and also transmit torque, rub against each other and over time they will wear away. So here's a picture of, of the teeth that are worn away in a gear coupling just showing you that you, you, you will have to replace them on a regular basis. So as far as the disc coupling, what are some of the features of a disc coupling? A disc coupling requires no maintenance or lubrication. Yeah, so it can be installed and just be left alone to run your pulp and paper equipment. It can be inspected while the machine is running using a handheld portable strobe light. They exceed API 610 specifications, which is a common industry specification that a lot of people refer to. Can be rebuilt on site without moving the, the shaft hubs from the shafts uh, using factory supplied repair kits. There's various close coupled and spacer type couplings that are readily available from inventory to support your, your needs in the field. Uh, the temperature limitations aren't there because there's no lubrication required on the coupling because there's no metal to metal wearing parts. And typically you can see um, mean lives of 30 years plus on disc couplings. So this is just a case study that was done uh, that's available on the John Crane website. Uh, the link to the case study is in the slideshow that you'll be getting after the webin webinar. Um, so you can go to it and read it in, uh, completely if you, if you need to. At this point, I just want to highlight some of the key features within this case study. Uh, so the mill has eliminated all its coupling inspection downtime by replacing the steel gear couplings with John Crane Metastream couplings. Inspections are now undertaken every six months while the recycling machines are operating and require only visual inspection using a strobe light. The disc couplings that we supplied are now a bit of, uh, are running at 10 to 15 years, which is far exceeding the five-year lifespan that they were getting with the gear couplings. The coupling upgrade has freed up two mill rights to design and maintain other equipment within the mill. Um, so they're not spending all their time lubricating gear couplings. Expensive coupling lubrication maintenance costs have been eliminated. And the mill is estimating that every year they're saving $66,000 by switching to the disc couplings over the gear couplings by removing all the lubrication needs and all the downtime associated with that. The particular company in question is in the process of also upgrading the third recycling machine at the mill, continuing its strategy of lowering maintenance and downtown cost. So now I want to just quickly go over some features within disc couplings that you'll probably want to help you um, main, um, keep your uh, pulp and paper machines running at optimum performance. Uh, for the longest time possible and, and keep your downtime to a minimum. Uh, the first one is the transmission unit. Um, now disc couplings uh, come in two forms generally. You've got the disc couplings which are just loose disc which will bolt to hubs that you assemble on the shaft and you have a spacer in between. The issue with that is when you're trying to install in it, you've got tight fitting drive bolts going through the disc and going into the hubs on the shafts and then you've got to try and support the heavy spacer in between it and line up bolt holes while you're doing all this. All this is, is difficult in the best of circumstances, but as you all know, on some of the pulp and paper machines, there's not a lot of space to work, so it makes it an even harder job. So with a factory assembled transmission unit, you can either have a factory assemble the, the center unit, or you can re replace the, the, repair the transmission unit on a workbench within your plant using factory supplied repair kits. Now the transmission unit, to install it, all you're going to do is install the two hubs on the shaft, slide the transmission unit between the two hubs, and then radially locating pilots are going to locate the transmission unit in place radially, and then you're going to use industry standard bolting coming through the hub into the transmission unit with clearance holes in the hub that make it nice and easy to tighten up the bolt and lock it in place actually. So it's a lot easier to, to install and remove in the field. 
and this is the ultimate in easy installation, especially on long limb spaces like like used on the the couplings on the paper rolls. The other thing about factory assembled transmission units is because you don't have the, loo the, the drive bolts that are going through the tight fitting loose membranes and drive holes on the spaces and hubs that are on the shaft, you're actually increasing the mean life of the coupling. So what we found over the years is rather than a loose disc coupling where you may only get a seven year life with a factory assembled transmission unit, you're looking closer to a 30 year mean life. So a factory assembled transmission unit gives you a longer life lets you run your machine for longer and produce more paper with that with less downtime. The other f feature of a factory assembled transmission unit is the safety features within the design which actually increases the safety within your plant. Another feature on a disc coupling that you, you, you really want to, to consider is a scallop disc. Uh, what you see on the screen right now is a standard disc, which is just a circular disc with some drive holes punched through it. Very cheap to make, um, but one of the issues that the field technicians found with this, this type of disc is that it always fails around the drive holes, which is the weak point. And then you get, if it does fail, you get pieces of sharp disc flying out from between the, between the machine. And that's where the term razor blade failure came from. The field technicians came up with this term because it looks like razor blades flying through the air. So obviously this is not a, a good safety feature, so it's something that you should, should consider move, removing by going to scallop disc. So what John Crane Metastream did was develop a scallop disc. Uh, the scallop disc can still transmit as much torque as the standard disc because all the torque transmission is through the link from the drive to the driven hole. Um, the, the, the advantage is that any failure will occur in at the link in between the two holes, so the bolts actually retain any, any loose parts in place within the coupling and they don't fly out, so you remove the razor blade failure scenario. The other benefit of a scallop disc is you're removing the material on the outside um, so you've got less material resisting misalignment or bending of the disc. And the benefit of that is you end up putting less actual loading on your pulp and paper machines because it's easier to flex the disc and accommodate misalignment. Uh, this is just a, a quick picture showing how a disc coupling works. Basically you have half the, half, half the bolts connected to the drive machine and the other bolts in between are connected to the driven machine and that basically causes the disc to stretch and, and, and create a tension and, com and compression link. Uh, this picture is obviously exaggerated uh, just to um, highlight the point. Um, so you end up with a compression and tension link. The stainless steel disc that we use in all our couplings are very strong in tension. In compression, if you think of about any thin piece of steel, if you put it in compression, it's going to bend. And if you bend, if you have the two discs next to each other bending against each other, then it causes the two discs next to each other to rub against each other, and that can cause fretting corrosion. Um, so to prolong the life of the disc coupling, what we do at John Crane, and it's something that you consider on any disc coupling you, you, you buy, is you put pre-stretch into the disc. So you're actually taking the standard disc and stretching it so both the compression link and the tension link are put into tension so there's less likelihood of getting fretting corrosion uh, within the disc and having to shut down your pulp and paper machines. How do you get pre-stretch? Very simple really. You just machine the bolt circle diameter in, your, in your, the metal parts either side of the disc pack to be on a larger bolt circle diameter. So when you assemble the disc into the, into the parts, it actually stretch the disc outwards to create pre-stretch in the disc. But it gives you a, it removes one of the possibilities of failure in the field, so it allows you to run your equipment, your public paper equipment for a longer time without costly shutdowns. Um, another thing to consider is backlash um, within a gear coupling. 
Um, it requires clearance between the, 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 the two teeth to accommodate misalignment and also torque transmission. Um, and this is what's called as uh, backlash uh, between the mesh and gear teeth. Um, so as the coupling, the metal to metal teeth rub against each other, this causes it to wear. And this causes even more deep gap between the teeth and thus more backlash. Why is that critical? That's critical because backlash will produce uneven thickness in your paper from the paper roll. So due to the flexing unit design of a disc coupling, there is no backlash within a disc coupling. So a disc coupling will help you manage the quality of the paper and also control the consistency and the thickness of the paper being manufactured at your plant. Another thing to consider with disc couplings is you want to make sure that the, 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 the washer either side of the disc that is clumping the disc together is not just an industry standard washer, it's actually a washer that's been designed to work in a disc coupling and it has the optimum, optimum radius because as you all know on pulp and paper machines there's always some misalignment especially on the long length shaft separations and you want the disc to be able to bend around the washer that's clumping it so that's why we have the, the radius and, and the chamfer on the washer to allow you to get the maximum life out of the coupling and also increase the, the running time of your equipment and the profit, profit, profitability of your pulp of paper mill. Another feature within disc couplings is overload collars. So what is an overload collar? Well, it's a it's a collar around the, the drive hardware that has a specific clearance between itself and the clearance hole in the spacer or the guard ring. Now this tight fitting clearance in a specific torque overload condition, which you'll see at times, the overload collar will actually hit the clearance hole in the spacer or the guard ring and actually help transmit the torque why, why is that important? Well, that's important because in, in some instances that will allow you to reuse the disc pack after the torque overload has, has appeared and, and gone away again. Um, we, if you don't have an overload collar, you're going to end up replacing the disc packs and taking down your pulp and paper machines for, for, for repair at that point to replace the disc packs. The other thing a torque overload collar does is if you have a, you know, a, a, a disc pack failure, within the coupling due to an excessive torque overload, the overload collar is actually running in the clearance hole. And because it's a smooth surface, it will generate much less damage to the spacer. Whereas it was, with, with some couplings, they just have a hex head bolt in there. And if you think of a hex head bolt with all the sharp corners of the hex, that will actually tear away at your clearance hole and actually do great damage to your spacer. The key to that is when you take the, uh, the take the machine the pulp and paper machine down to replace um, the coupling. If you've got an overload collar, there's more there's more possibility of reusing the spacer and not having to have your paper machine down for a while waiting for a new spacer to be to, to be delivered from the plant. Um, all. Um, stainless, all, all disc couplings use the modified Goodman diagram to calculate how much stress um, the, the disc in, within the disc coupling can handle. So basically they work, this, work out what the safe working stress is for the disc material in question and then from that we calculate how much torque, speed and misalignment can, can be uh, handled by that disc within that disc coupling. Now the important thing to, to note here is John Crane Metastream, the maximum torque, speed and misalignment that's stated in the catalogue can all be handled at the same time. So, so, so it doesn't matter you know, what combination you have in your plant, you won't have an issue with failure of the coupling. That is something that you can't always say about the, the competition because they play with these numbers and overlap the numbers. Another key feature of a factory assembled transmission unit is the anti-fly feature. Now why is an anti-fly feature important? Well if, if, you, if you do have an overload condition that causes the disc to break, then the spacer 
between between the disc would fly out from between your your equipment and as you quite know some of these spaces are quite heavy and would create a lot of damage so the the big benefit of the antifly feature is it stops the spacer it's a physical stop to stop the spacer from flying out from your equipment so it's a it's a key safety feature that we have on all our all our factory assembled transmission units to keep your plant and your employees safe um, all John Crane Metastream couplings have these extra design safety features um, that I've been talking about, and they help keep your pulp and paper machines up and running. Uh, a, couple, a couple of features I want to mention quickly is uh, slots. You could look for slots in either the hub, between the hub and the factory assembled transmission unit, or even in the spacer. Uh, why, why would you want a slot? Well, you have the slots there to help you break the pilot between the transmission unit and the hub. If you haven't got the slots, uh, then you're relying on threaded holes, and they don't always do the job. So it's something to look for to, to help you install and remove the coupling in the field. Uh, one last thing. Um, you, you see here there's a picture of a coupling. That coupling doesn't have any protective coating on it, so it's open to the, the, the atmosphere within your plant. Whereas this picture will show between the yellow and the blue uh, drive and driven machine, there's a coupling and it has a, a coating on it. Why is that important? Well, pulp and paper couplings operate in a hot and humid environment that corrodes unprotected steel and shortens coupling life. This also causes lubricants and seals to break down on the gear couplings. Well, all John Crane Metastream couplings are phosphate coated as standard to help prolong the life of the coupling. Uh, once again, this is, this is something with a lot of the competition, you end up paying extra fees to be able to get a coated coupling. Uh, we want to provide it coated to prolong the life of the coupling and keep your equipment up and running. So at this point, I'm going to pass you over to Mike LeBlanc, who's going to go over uh, applications where uh, disc couplings that we supply have been supplied with all the features that I've just talked about. And he's also going to go over um, how to reduce your inventory cost on your elastomeric couplings. Thanks, Tony. Uh in 2006, Crane started looking at where we were putting couplings in uh, pulp and paper applications, and we started developing a list. And I thought I'd share some of those applications with you all. And uh, so, moving on here, uh, the first rolled application that we did on a paper machine was about then. And uh, like usual, we had a, a little bit of a challenge. We were having some issues with varying roll lengths, and the application that we were looking at then was a uh, 75 horse application at 300 RPM on a corrugator. And in this case, they had uh, three machines running, about 20 rolls each. And most of them were pretty close to the same length, between 68 and 72 inches. We had a few longer ones. And they were using number three gear couplings. And they were having issues with coupling failures when they did their outages. They had a lot of different uh, roll drives, and they would mix some of them up, which would mess up the axial misalignment. And the ones that they got in the wrong spot uh, failed pretty quickly. Uh, we came up with a design where we managed to salvage the rigid gear couplings that they had on their gearbox and their roll. We uh, designed adapters to adapt into those uh, hubs. And on the gear coupling side, uh, they, were using a piece, uh, they were using a piece of cold roll steel, one in 15 sixteenths inch in diameter. And so what we did was we designed an elongated hub that gave them plus or minus two inches, which is basically a universal coupling for the majority of the rolls, and they were able to use the, that adjustable length quite effectively uh, using a rig threader to lock the uh, hub onto the shaft and eliminate their axial misalignment problem. Mike, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you speak a little louder? The audience is having trouble hearing you. Oh, sorry. Is this better? Hello? Yeah, just yeah, okay. a little bit better. Okay. Uh, the next application we brought up was a dry roll. Again, a very similar application. Uh, we modified the, the design on this one where we eliminated the hubs of the gear couplings. as a number seven gear coupling that we were replacing. And uh, 
We also used a ring setter with a locking, the locking device and with some adjustment where we could, um, again, give them that axial adjustment on the dryer rolls. There was about 40 of these involved. And again, with one standardized part, we made their life a lot better. Other typical applications we see uh, were steam uh, turbine couplings. Uh, those couplings, uh, those type drives and coupling tanks were slowly going away, but there's still a few out there where you have a, main, a steam uh, turbine driving machine with a line shaft. And uh, when I go into those old places, the first thing they want to do is replace the gear on the gear, the gear coupling on the steam turbine because it's so hot. Uh, it's very common to see. Uh, a one-year lifespan, if you're lucky, on, on those because the, the steam cooks up the grease in the gear coupling and causes a premature failure. Uh, <clears throat> this particular application was the main drive, which was 4,400 RPM running at about 6,000 horsepower, going into a big main gearbox with two output shafts running in either direction down the length of the machine. Uh, similar, I guess, or another problem drive we ran into was a lime kiln application. Again, this was the output <coughs> drive shaft of a gearbox. So we had a 350 horsepower motor going into a big gearbox, and the output shaft was 19.2 RPM. Uh, a lot of slow speed applications. Uh, we do run a disease, and uh, typically mechanical gear type couplings have a lot of trouble with those. They rely on centrifugal force to spread the lubricant across the gear teeth. Uh, that's called the catenary effect. And when your speed drops too low, below 50 RPM, typically you have some issues. This was a number 12 gear coupling. Uh, the shaft separation on these were about 60 inches. It was a very large application and uh, very expensive to replace the gear teeth, which would give them a relatively short life. And again, uh, we, were, we were very successful. That product is still in service today. Again, more typical applications, force draft fans. Uh, we run into those a lot in pulp and paper machines. And uh, again, uh, typically we're replacing a close couple mechanical gear. Uh, the one up in the top left-hand corner was 800 horsepower at 1180 RPM. Fan pumps, which are also very common, usually located in a pretty tough place up underneath the machine. Uh, this particular application was uh, 1,500 horsepower at 850 RPM. And uh, typically, we place, typically it's a number four to a number six gear coupling. And again, uh, very difficult to maintain. Uh, the guys who put, uh, go to membrane couplings down there or disc couplings, eliminating the uh, maintenance required on those is, is a great help. It's a really a, a good thing. Cooch rolls, again, this is the high speed side. I know uh, most of the mills today are DC or AC driven, so you have a high speed electric motor feeding into a gearbox and then with an output uh, <coughs> uh, speed of much lower than that. And uh, again, typical close couple application, 350 horsepower at 210 RPM. Wire rolls as well, as well are, are quite common. And again, in this application, we replaced a close couple, a spacer coupling. It was a, uh, a gear type coupling and we went in with a, it was a disc coupling at 900 horsepower at 1177 RPM. Master wire roll, again, another large gear coupling that we replaced, close couple. And uh, again, this particular application was 850 horsepower at about 180 RPM. We do run through some continu continuous digesters as well. This particular application had three screws that main drives. Uh, Again, very large couplings, 150 horsepower at 180 RPM. And uh, I put this application in there because in pulp and paper, we do see a lot of big, heavy equipment and a lot of big, heavy couplings. And in this case, when we designed our coupling, we thought we offered to profile the hubs on it. And uh, the maintenance guys said, oh, no, we can handle this big equipment, no problem at all. Of course, when they went to install it, it was a little more of a job than they thought it was. And when we went to replace the other two, they talked to us about profiling the hubs. All we do when we say profile the hubs is shorten them up as much as we can and take some of the uh, steel off the OD where we can. And uh, it makes them a lot more manageable. And it really, when we manufacture them, it doesn't cost any more to do it. Uh, they like these so much that we went back and rebuilt, redid the hubs on the first one. And uh, 
They're very pleased with them. They're still running today. We also do some specially designed couplings. In this case, this is a shear pin coupling. It's on the winder at the end of your machine. The big winder is, uh, is driven by a 350 horse DC motor, connecting the coupling, connecting to a big gearbox. And on the output shaft, we had about an eight foot disc break with a special quick disconnect to the paper rolls, which were about 30 feet uh, wide and about 20 feet in diameter, a tremendous amount of mass. And of course, we had to design a coupling that was going to be the weakest link in the system, which was important. Uh, so we didn't tear any of their equipment up. And in this case, uh, it's doing a good job for them. They're real happy with it. And uh, it does share every now and then, but uh, where we position the the pin, which is over near the motor, it's very easy for, for, for the maintenance guys to access them. Just two little set screws backed off and punched the old pin out with a new one in. They're back up and running in five or ten minutes. It really solved their problem. Of course, vacuum pumps are also a mainstay in all your, all your paper machines as well. Uh, this was probably the biggest one I've ever done. It was um, 2,000 horsepower running at about 300 RPM. It was a bank of three of them at a mill. And this was a new installation. We did it about five years ago. And they're still very pleased with the operation today. And I'm sure it will be running for a long time. We also uh, can uh, react to help you when you're in a down situation. We're proud of the way we perform. In this case, this is a fan pump. It was a new installation. There was three of them at a um, paper mill. Uh, they were just as a brand new plant. They were just putting it in. And when they went to install the couplings and start get everything rolling, they found out that the ones that were designed by the manufacturer were wrong. And they needed them very quickly. They ordered them in 24 hours. Uh, they came to us. Uh, our team got together, had a meeting. Uh, we found that we had some of the parts in stock, some of them we had to make. We would start short basically six parts. If you look at the picture, you can see we, the gray coating that we normally put on our couplings. The two parts that we made are bright silver. It was a spool piece in the center, and on the right side, the guard ring that connected to the hub. We were able to get six machinists in on a midnight shift, and each one of them cut one of the six parts that we needed. We air freighted the hubs that afternoon so that the mill could machine the hubs. And we made them up at the transmission units that we shipped out the next morning that they received the next afternoon. And they were up and running in about 24 hours. They were so pleased with it, we did a write-up on it. Uh, we have it's on our website. And uh, all the details are there. But bottom line, when you start bringing a mill, keeping it from, run, from losing days of operation, uh, the, uh, it equated to about $500,000 a day in savings and lost production. And uh, needless to say, they were very pleased with it. We're going to talk about elastor couplings for a little bit because it, we have a lot of those in the, in the plants, and we see a lot of mechanical couplings as well. I didn't put them on this slide. Uh, they have some of the oldest designs around, like the block. Rubber block type couplings and elastomeric jaw couplings, pin and bushing couplings, but by far the most popular are elastomer and shear and rubber tire type couplings. And we also see some grid type couplings in that mess too. So having talk, talking about those, uh, an elastomer and shear is the newest design on the market. It's easily, easy to rotate the hubs independently for motor testing without moving your equipment. They have no metal to metal contact. They're Replace, the inserts could be replaced, replaced quickly, and uh, the retaining rings supplied are supplied with uh, locking screws and alignment pins. It's like a, a belt and suspenders. It makes it easier to install. It's just a much better performing part. When we look at the market, <laughs> the big disc couplings you know, cover the, the big uh, paper equipment, but the reality is there's a lot of general pump drives underneath that machine that's supported also. And um, when we try to design our products, we look at what, what the market's going to require, and we try to figure out how they're going to fit into a pump population. We did this project back in the early 90s called the 602 Project. It was a whole plant. And we listed all the drives that were in it, 
And while it does look very impressive to figure out what's going to go on in your market, there's some specialty stuff in there that we want to weed out. So we modified the list into what we looked at the most, the, basically the heart of the, the market. And when we did that, going uh, 75 horse at 18 and doubling that for the same common torque at higher speeds, 150 horse at 3,600 RPM, we found that that was roughly 75% of the market. Uh, looking at that and using that as our model for the torques that we would, our couplings would require, we looked at the pump di shaft diameters that were in the market in that size range, and we came up with 7 eighths down through 2 and 3 eighths inch, and the shaft separations for the pumps for the mechanical seals to get for removal and, or reinstallation. And uh, those DBSCs are what we saw as required sizes for that part of the market. The working part of the, the drives, the motors, that was pretty much sealed up by NEMA, the National Electric Motor Association. They call, they call out the shaft sizes for the different torques, and so it's pretty easy to determine which shafts you need there. Looking at the market, once you that do that for, you can decide pretty much what you need to take care of the market that's out there. We know that the pump sizes will be from 7 eighths to 2 and 3, two and two and three eighths, and the motors will be from, again, 1 and an eighth through 2 and 3 eighths. So now, we look at the approach to, to the market. There's two ways to go with the market. You can go for lowest acquisition cost. And if you look at the way tire couplings and some of the other products that we have out there go, it looks like they change their, their coupling size about every 10 horsepower. When you do that, you ensure that you always have the lowest acquisition cost for every application. The only other option is to go with the lowest cost of ownership. When you do that, you try to come up with couplings that will cover a larger part of the market with fewer sizes. And there's advantages to both. But when you compare them, uh, the which, which market approach you know, is best for you, uh, when we look at uh, <coughs> less coupling sizes of the, of the lowest cost of ownership, you have less spare inventory required, you have less spacer required on the sh space required on the shelf, and you have the lowest cost of ownership for acquisition cost and spare cost. As you can see, spare inserts for the last marine shear cost couplings cost 264% less than the tire couplings. Each time you replace an insert in the plant, how often do you replace your elastomer inserts? Elastomeric and shear couplings take less than a minute to replace each insert, which is more than five times five minutes savings per each piece on your equipment, and each time you replace your insert. This reduces your plant downtime and allows you to work other tasks. We also were concerned about the size, and again, in almost every instance, our sizes are smaller. When you, when you go with an elastomer and shear, Anything above 10 horsepower is smaller, and anything under 10 horsepower is only slightly larger. The elastomer shear also has more insert materials to offer. Uh, the standard uh, torque and shear uh, uh, delivers a number of compounds. Uh, the polyurethane compounds have instant life. Uh, the elements are very resistant to corrosion, chemicals, humidity, oils and not affected by UV light. We have a standard jello offering that goes to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, high torque, same. We also have a high temperature orange insert, which goes to 300, and the high torque, high temp blue insert will do the same up to 300. Tire couplings also bring in external forces in their operation. They increase your maintenance. They have higher loads on the bearings, uh, they have increased lubrication cost and increased induced vibration. As you can see here, the centrifugal force pushing outward on the tire ex ex uh, inserts axial forces on your bearings and your seals. These are some excellent pictures that show exactly how much torque is actually being 
pushed into the shaft, you could see that high stiff modulus is really putting some force, some stress on your shafts. And the other thing that they uh, are uh, have is a variable misalignment capability. The smaller sizes can go up to four degrees, but as you go larger, it drops to an inch and a half. And while misalignment is something we all have to consider, and we all want to get the best alignment possible, do we really need that much misalignment capability? You know, even these guys report that a coupling alignment is directly related to smooth, efficient equipment operation. Care should be taken for the best possible alignment. And uh, I think that's pretty much our line. The bottom line, it's all about safety and reliability. Uh, earlier, Tony mentioned uh, that all of our couplings are, are supplied with at least one um, uh, degree of uh, anti-fly. And uh, as you can see, these competitive couplings don't. Bottom line, uh, we get a call at least once or twice a year where one of these come apart. This is a typical application, and in failure, this is a typical result. As you can see, the parts were flying that went flying. The coupling guard itself was thrown 12 feet. An 88-pound bearing housing was 14 feet. The coupling itself was 18 feet, and the bottom bearing housing went 40 feet. These are the pictures of the failure. That shaft in the upper left-hand corner is a five-inch shaft, and it was bent 30 degrees in about three revolutions, which is probably a hundredth of a second. It didn't take long, and everything else went downhill pretty quickly from there. It's important that we have an anti-fly feature in all of our products. In summary, <laughs> John Crane uh, increases coupling life and eliminates coupling maintenance in paper machine downtime with our MetaStream and PowerStream couplings. We decrease critical equipment downtime, reduce maintenance expenses, which help improve your mill's bottom line. We reduce outside diameter and weight on your high torque applications due to an optimized design, and we achieve longer service cycle, life cycle. So Lynn, are you ready? I'm ready. Hello? Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael thank and Tony. You. Thank you so much for these the great information on couplings and for sharing um, strategies and real-world case studies and examples. I'm sure this will be very helpful to our audience when they are looking to um, replace the gear couplings with disc couplings and increase their um, MTBR, increase their productivity at the mill with their pulp machines and all their critical machines. So thank you so much. Um, this. Um, concludes the webinar, so I'm going to really quickly share with you, John Crane works with some of the world's leading pulp and paper companies out there, and in a recent customer survey, um, some of our, our customers gave this really excellent feedback that John Crane, um, whether they're working with us in pulp and paper, working with couplings or mechanical seal solutions, engineered solutions, we help them improve their performance, we um, decrease their total cost of ownership. We increase their MTBR. In some instances with mechanical seals, we can help them save water and environmental waste. And we have superior engineering support. And we can really help them boost their product performance and, and manufacturing output in the pulp and paper mill. So um, that's really important to know that our customers are very expensive. So at uh, John Crane, we truly understand the rigorous applications you face in pulp and paper. We know it um, in and out. We understand all of your mission critical pumps. You can see all the different types of pumps and rotating equipment that we can work with you on. And of course, the couplings offering that we have. Um, so this brings us to the conclusion of the webinar. We've saved a few minutes here at the end to go through a Q&A, and we will be um, answering some of the questions that you sent to us during the call. Okay, let's see. Okay, here's a question. Um, how much misalignment can these disc couplings accept on the long shaft separation of a paper roll coupling? Um, Tony, do you, that sounds like you could answer that. Can you take that one? Sure, Jolene. 
Um, so, for example, the six link disc couplings we were talking about, they can accept up to half a degree of angular misalignment, which equates to around half an inch of parallel offset misalignment for every 60 inch of shaft separation. So if you think about the, you know, um, the, the long um, shaft couplings on a, a paper roll, um, they're around about 100, 120 inches. So for 120 inch shaft separation, you have uh, one inch of parallel offset misalignment, which is normally more than enough for the, for the misalignment that's required on the equipment. Excellent, okay, thank you. Um, here's another question that came in. Is a disc coupling cost effective with a gear coupling? Uh, Mike, can you answer that one? Sure, Jolyn, I'd be glad to. Yes, not only is a disc coupling priced competitive with a gear coupling, typically, but I'm going to say competitive within 10% for a given diameter, but you also get a huge cost benefit of no continuous maintenance cost with the disc coupling. No more lubrication, no more downtime to, to inspect them. You can, like I said, you can run them. You can actually do an inspection while it's in operation. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Acquisition cost is close, but when it comes to the cost of ownership, far superior. Okay, okay. good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, here's a question that came in. Let me read it. Um, do you need a physical axial stop on a disc, disc coupling? Uh, Tony or my, Tony, you want to take that? Sure, sure. Um, unlike gear couplings, you know, where the gear teeth have no limit when moving actually, on a disc coupling, the flexing packs require an actual load to be applied to them for them to deflect actually. At small actual deflections, this load is very small, but as the deflection increases, so does the actual load required. So disc couplings will always center themselves actually and don't need a physical stop just to keep the coupling running its ideal axle position. Now I would also say that in some applications, not many on the pulp and paper, um, you do need a physical stop because the load is that high. And in them cases, there are um, bone, bone shaft couplings, uh, disc couplings that are available that can actually um, have a physical stop in them that can be used in them circumstances. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, here's another question. In your presentation, Mike, um, why did you say disc coupling should last 30 years, but the case study indicated the, cu the customer actually saw a coupling lifespan of up to 15 years? Okay, well, that's, that's, thank you. Uh, I, would, I would like to say that in uh, an ideal misalignment or torque transmission condition, the disc couplings are designed to last infinitely. But you, the, the reality is, when you're on a piece of equipment, you have atmospheric temperature changes, you have load variations. Those all affect your coupling's life. What we see typically with a good, what we call prestigious maintenance program where we have excellent, excellent or good alignment, they have typically a, a standard of a half a degree. 10 to 15 years is a fair life for the coupling. And a lot of times they'll, they'll actually change the coupling before it fails knowing that it has set, had such an exceptional runtime. They want them. They know it's going to be a while before they get back to it again, and they'll up, they'll build them or up, you know, rebuild them uh, ahead of time, a little early. Uh, but bottom line, the the parts that don't wear, everything but the disc, do last that long. Uh, the only parts you're going to ever change or re, is when you rebuild that coupling will be the membranes and possibly the bolts, which is very inexpensive compared to the complete coupling. Typically, about 20% of the cost. So. Um, and like I said, ideally in a lab, certainly you're going to have an extremely long run time, but even in reality out in the field, the coupling will last a long time. How's that? Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Um, we've got a couple minutes left. We'll just field one more question. Uh, here, okay. Are you really telling me that I don't need to schedule any maintenance if I switch to a disc coupling? Is that true? Um, do, you me, do you want me to take that one, yeah. Jolyn? Sure, sure. Either one of you. Yep. Go ahead, Tony. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Um, if you stop your equipment to service another part of the paper machine, then you can visually check the disc within the flexing disc packs of the, of the coupling to ensure you see no visual, visual damage to the disc. 
Uh, you can also periodically check the disc pack with a strobe light while the equipment is running, but there's no need to schedule costly shutdowns for lubrication or inspection of the coupling like you have on a gear coupling. Uh, so yes, uh, you, you don't need to schedule any maintenance with a disc coupling, which is the big benefit over the gear couplings. Thank you. That sounds like a great reason to consider disc coupling for the savings and the maintenance. So excellent. Okay, with that, this concludes our webinar. Um, thank you so much for joining. We will be hosting future webinars, so we hope you, you join this engineering educational community and you will register for future webinars that we have. As I said, um, if we did not get to your questions, we will follow up with you. If you submitted th those that were submitted, we will follow up specifically with you as an individual. You will get an email follow-up after the webinar with the webinar recording, and the PowerPoint deck will be included in the um, follow-up email. Also, please visit johncrane.com, our resources webinar library. We have many different topics that will help you with um, increasing the productivity and the MTBR of your, rot your critical rotating equipment. So there's a lot of great um, informational and educational content that you can consume on demand um, when you want to. So um, we're glad that you joined us. And um, from the engineering experts at John Crane, we thank you for spending your afternoon with us. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs>